universally. The global moral call for a new human responsibility inevitably and complementarily requires an ethical gay psychology heroically aiming to wholesomely extend and sincerely complete the profound shamanic self-alchemy rightly unleashed qualitatively by homosexual identity formation, a crucial internal extension of authoritative self-responsibility that progressively addresses the remaining black and primal materia of retrospective traumatic effects still present needfully after a secure gay identity is salubriously well achieved. Thus, wise to transmutationally expedite more and more consequentially the finer chromatic truth of homosexual alchemical gold, a most precious jewel of the most exquisite sanctificational sort a redolently scintillating boon, eloquently sung of ecstatically and wonderfully by artfully transformed same-sex loving poets and sages of many famous and lesser known cultures and eras, now to be made commonly available enhanced mentally to the good initiatory reach of all the worthiest goal and cause that can today be devotedly, wholeheartedly served in my humble personal estimation. Let us hope that boldly moving more purposefully into this brave new future of greater gay emancipation, expeditionally through that resplendent subjective procreation, which is today enabled best by cultivating a homosexually centered psychoanalysis conscientiously, will rewardingly bear abundantly tangible access comprehensionally in an expanding qualitative manner summatorily to the estimationally rarest treasures and most advanced constitutional marvels of possible human becoming, both for ourselves and for everyone. Thank you. stimulating in so many ways. I imagine there must be all kinds of feelings in the room right now. Um, anyone to, uh, want to be brave to start out our conversation? We have about a half an hour we can talk to each other about what you just heard, the journey you've just been on. Tom? Can you say my name? My yeah, say your name first, please. Um, for me, it was in the very beginning when you were talking about that there was a sense of fear over me. It was like, oh my God, he's being revolutionary and I can't even conceptualize that. I guess my internalized homophobia was coming up, saying this is too uh, scary to even contemplate. But as you were talking, as you were going through, and kind of like invoking this picture and, and, and envisioning this powerful transformational aspect of um, gay homosexual, you know, kind of like psychological development, the sense of fear kind of diminished. And in the end, when you were talking about the alchemical golden jewel of it, then it's like came to be almost a sense of empowerment and thinking this sounds wonderful and I, and I would hope that I would be able to participate in a deep way in being able to be someone who could do that because I think it's very vital to our society right now and, and to me personally as, as, a, as a gay man that I want to be able to be more uh, individuated and, and have access to the shadow side of myself. It just, it just really was interesting to see the progression of going from the ultimate fear at the beginning. I mean, I really felt frightened mm -hmm. to be more empowered at the end. I really was uh, just amazed to see how that went. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I wonder if anyone has a reaction to what Tom said in terms of a similar experience or a different experience? Going from fear to then a more inspired place? Other, other feelings or reactions? Gene. My name is Gene. I've been in and out of the of Mitch's circle for a number of years now. Uh, 
If I may, I'd like to just say that I think your speech was a real example of visionary love. Um, while you were talking, I had a momentary vision for want of a better word. Um, 20 years from now, 200 years from now, whatever, when there will be a time that the recognition by a heterosexual couple that one of their little babies is gay will be met with joy because it's going to be a contribution to the furthering of humanity. And that's the biggest spark that I got out of your speech tonight. Thank you. My name is Chaz, and um, on top of that, I also got, it's going to be a hell of a lot of work for all of us. I'm <laughs> 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 like, God, let us off the hook. But it, it, felt, it feels possible, too. I mean, like, you see my dream in the way, and a uh, good groundwork for us, and you can see how you expect it, and the work that it's going to take to get there. Which, in my opinion, includes uh, the uh, numinous future, uh, but uh, very practical at the same time if we pay attention to uh, what's most immediate in the shadow simultaneously. It does a lot of work mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Anyone else who had a similar reaction to Chaz or this feeling of, wow, this is so, so much here that we have to take on? Um, right. I had so, well, sort of similar. I'm having a lot of times of shame right now, more so than usually when I talk. It's because I um, want to own my shadow, and uh, and I was trying to uh, sit here with more of that intention tonight, and uh, I'm so fucking ashamed. It's so it's much easier it's much easier for me to say something nice and feel like I'm going to get love, and I'm so. That, that need for love is, is so uh, compelling or controlling in me. But I want to say that I was actually, um, uh, I, have this, I have a negative reaction. Oh, God, I feel so ashamed. Ah! 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 I, I want to say that I have, um, it, like it was hard for me to clap at the end. I just feel so competitive and inferior when you, when you, Mitch, when you evoke this vision that is so beyond what I feel like I can hold at this moment, and uh, and uh, I just feel like I want my I have kids. I want to destroy kids. Uh, meaning my my uh, my childhood trauma, personal pers personified. I have these kids that want to destroy you, uh, replace you, so that I can be the goodness and, and get love. Uh, um, you know, I just had so much envy, and I, I just, that's a big part of what's going on in my, my psyche right now, I'm just becoming more aware of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's what this was uh, for me tonight. I guess that's the main thing that I, I got more aware of. Sounds like you were strongly provoked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And strong feelings. Yeah. Great. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for, strong provocation and stimulation. Not just merely ideas and thought. There's a lot to wrestle with them. <laughs> <laughs> There's this way, as I experienced it, that this, that listening to you speak, it kind of throws yourself back in on yourself, mm -hmm. even as you listen to the bigger ideas. Mm -hmm. I imagine maybe other people also felt challenged in the way that Bryce is evoking. Tom talked about fear at the beginning. Grace is talking about this intense inferiority and even envy. Chaz is talking about the, the, the challenge or maybe the overwhelming feeling of hard work. Yes, Andrew? Andrew, um, one of the things that sort of came to mind is how do we get the rest of the world to accept that work when we are actually trying to, you know, with this numinosity and everything, how do you spread that amongst other people if they're not really you know, even aware of their own potential. And, and I'm talking about the entire world, not just the gay, not just LGBT. Is that a rhetorical question? 
Yeah. Asking, actually asking a question. You could actually answer. <laughs> 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 Only against great uh, opposing forces. Of course. <laughs> As I commented on in the speech, most people seem entirely out to lunch about dealing with their psychology. Very understandable since that psychology is defined by its defenses and avoidances. Since all children are traumatized in every culture I'm aware of uh, to be enculturated against their own existential truth and purity and thus uh, are trained from the beginning to be squashed in one's own being and highly, extremely defended. The style, depending on which culture it is, which historical time and place it is. But nonetheless, always that is going on, and thus always preventing uh, anything but ferocious opposition to any attempt at greater psychological awareness, self-awareness. In other words, psychological self-awareness is not like a, a more simple sort of task, like, oh, uh, I'm going to walk to the store to get some potatoes to cook for dinner. Because as soon as you take that first step, a counteracting force rises up immediately that is at least of equivalent power that stops that from happening. Thus, psychological consciousness is only gained through sweat, blood, and tears against what will feel like one's own sincere self-interest. Thus, accounting, perhaps accounting, for how it is that humanity has taken so long, and even to this day, after the invention of psychological methods, still in the mass, continues to utterly avoid taking appropriate responsibility, which is why I made the topic of this second speech about that matter. Because it needs so much emphasis, and is so little able to be attended to, even when one wants to attend to it. That's why it needs a serious effort, a sustained effort, a persistent effort, uh, and only over a long extended period of time is anything going to be realistic, and this is the historical uh, crux of humanity's crisis today, in that this effort to be psychological takes so much damn effort, and yet our time is limited in terms of the ability of the Earth to continue absorbing garbage. More and more limited every day, as we are well aware, and thus bringing about a tremendous and unique crisis from which our species may emerge extinct. That is why uh, I am pushing this so strong uh, as best I can on the level that I can of not trying to underestimate the incredibly difficult challenge humanity is facing and continuing to blow badly, badly, badly. It's not very understandable. Who wants to face their shitty, inferior hurt? Who? You tell me. Nobody. Nobody. You see the contradiction that is required for us to become uh, better than emotional infants, which species has remained all these hundreds of thousands of years, in my opinion. Emotional infants. Not only is it regarding the earth that you're talking about, that the earth can't take all the garbage. We as individuals, and children as individuals, can't absorb that garbage anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a metaphor for what you're talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As within, so without. Right. As above, so below. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a powerful image, Tom. You know, the, the kids are suffering that internal garbage. Lloyd, did you? Yeah. Um, so I have, um, I'm associating, I have tremendous. A tremendous rage, I think, more than anything else. I have the inferiority right now because I feel like you're going to tear me. Okay, I'm projecting my kids that, you know, if I say something negative, that everybody's going to look at me with a bunch of mommy eyes and I'm going to have to, I'm not going to be able to deal with that. And, and it's subjective, that I'm having a horrible um, subjective experience of that, but I'm going to try and not go into victim mode because that's my usual MO and so with that. I make everybody feel sorry for me. And so I'm going to try and keep in an active kind of mode and, and actually stay with um, with the rage, even though I know that that's a um, that that's coming from kids too. But it's a healthier kind of place to be for me. And I want to continue with what Andrew said about um, the external world, which I will own the idea that I need to be very active. You know, I have this horrible, violent, controlling. Um, part of me that wants to change the world to what my, that there is no subjective experience, it's my experience, and it's the truth, and 
it's my job, not only do I have that, but it's my job to teach you that, you know, and so it's, it's, very, it's, it's very violent. At the same time, there's something that's been in me for about, uh, since the first time he made a talk, there was a gentleman who sat over there, and another thing I have to own is he was attractive, and so there's definitely a, a double projection going on here, because if he, I wasn't attracted to him, I don't think I'd have the, the virility that, um, that I have, that's a word, um, that I have right now. After he made the talk, it was very provocative, and I know I had never experienced something like that, and he certainly has, and I've had six years of him work. And so he asked a question to you about why you use that terminology that way. It was very passive aggressive. It was very violent. But he didn't know better. Um, he, he didn't have, I would have done that six years ago. And as he's doing that, I'm saying, oh my god, how could you ask it? And, you know, and I'm going nuts in here. You don't do that. And, and instead of what I was hoping, and so I don't know if I'm trying to control you or I'm, I don't.